Okay, this lesson is for the Cornet Project class. That's an extension of the IamCornet.org Apologetic and Outreach Ministry of Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And this lesson, um, the topic occurred to me through research about a video we recently did asking the question purposely, is there more than one kind of gospel? Well, of course not. And we demonstrated that. Well, now the controversy that came to my attention, I just recently purchased a book called Amazing Dispensationalism by Dr. Gene Kim, who, uh, who I, get, I suppose him to be the leader in dispensationalism as far as his uh, influence and scope out there on the internet and then his credentials and his scholarship, and he seems to be quite devoted to it, and he seems to be a subject matter expert with specialized knowledge and can go on a board and make charts and diagrams more efficiently and effectively than anyone that I've noticed so far. So this came across and came to my attention when I noticed that a David J. Stewart, as late as July 2019, had mentioned Pastor Gene Kim, uh, I've already bought the book, so I'll still evaluate dispensationalism according to that text and in light of Pastor Gene Kim and his scholarship and his um, definition and teaching, obviously, in that one resource. So look forward to that, but we'll be comparing it to the language, the common language, and that way we can determine. So we're going to see if Galatians 2.16 can help us answer the question that arose when I noticed this article that there are advocates of a different kind of gospel that holds relation to a different dispensation. So let's let David J. Stewart of JesusIsPrecious.org, as late as July 2019, he quotes Habakkuk where he says, the just shall live by his faith. He says there is a frightening heresy which has already crept into many Baptist churches today, which says that people were once saved by works during the Old Testament, but now are saved by grace alone today and will again be saved by works during the future tribulation period. Now, the field of dispensationalism is not what we do. Our apologetic and outreach is according to the inflectional morphemes, etymology, syntax, grammar, context, 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 of course. So as we look at this, uh, we'll just notice that another gospel, a different kind, has been advocated and supported. Uh, he goes on and says, no one has ever been able to keep the Mosaic law. He quotes Romans 3. That's true because even in the Mosaic law, there are thought crimes. Uh, covet is nothing we control. We're forbidden to covet something, meaning deliberately, willfully set our heart on something, but it doesn't stop us from lust of the flesh, both of the wills, both of the mind and of the flesh. It doesn't prevent us from infractions of omission where we fail to do something. We certainly, there's no human ever born that was willing or able to fulfill the law of God. Uh, only Jesus, the elect one, Isaiah 42, only Jesus was ever born willing and able to fulfill the law and to fulfill all righteousness with all of his heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. So let me move on. He says the very idea of mixing works with faith is satanic to the core. So he goes, he makes the ultimate charge. It's superlative. He goes on and mentions that a former professor of his at Hiles Anderson College, a Dr. William P. Grady, is also an advocate of this heresy. He says, Dr. Ruckman, the late Dr. Peter Ruckman, who I just recently came across him and working on uh, research about controversy surrounding the King James Version of the Bible. But he goes on and mentions uh, Pastor Gene Kim, Chet Hensley, Brian Den Linger, I don't know them, but this is quite a lengthy article. And I'll have this, most of this content of this article in the description. And you can go to JesusPrecious.org. I'll have the link to that. You can research that. But let's just get to what we do best and what we specialize in. And it's, it's a low level of difficulty, low degree of difficulty. It's very wordy. And when it's over with, we'll notice that it's quite definitive. Uh, the Koine text is really nothing left wanting for us to, I would suppose, speculate and conject. So let's just look and see. Uh, this is Galatians 2.16. This is the uh, perfect active participle from that insight word, that notice, that ado, that personal acquaintance with. Finally got it. Paul finally got it. And he mentions we 
uh, as ones who having noticed and are continuing to notice, there's your post-positive conjunction, moreover, that da there, that, and here's the negative particle, and I put the T in brackets just for a moment. So come over here to Anthropos. Notice there's no definite article. So uh, Paul says, uh, as ones who having noticed, that is moreover, as ones who having noticed and are continuing to notice that no kind of man is being justified, declared right, out from any kind of works of any kind of law. Now this, we've done this before. There's no definite article. It focuses on quality and kind. Same with law here, focus on quality and kind. So that he's saying, by being ones who having noticed, we're always noticing that no kind of man is being justified out from any kind of works of any kind of law, except, or if not, except through faithfulness of Jesus. And notice this, it's a kind of faithfulness, the emphasis on quality here, a kind of, and this is the kind of that only Jesus here. So within the purview of Jesus Christ, this faithfulness of Jesus Christ, which we know that's the definition of the righteousness of God. We know he's the one that fulfilled all the law. He fulfilled all righteousness. He became a curse, hanged on a tree. Uh, he humiliated himself when he became an obedient one until a kind of death, even the death of a cross, that kind of death. Uh, he alone is the one who conciliated the father. He alone is the one that all those fathered out from God are purchased by his blood, redeemed. He's the one that said of the publican who would not so much have lifted eyes before heaven, but smote upon his chest and said uh, to God, be merciful, that is conciliate yourself in relationship to me. He had seen the temple lambs being sacrificed. The pompous Pharisee stood there and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not like other, as other men are, extortioners, adulterers, or even as this publican. And the publican who would not let so much as lift his eyes said, uh, conciliate yourself, provide a base of satisfaction in relationship to me. The sinner, the one that the, the Pharisee was speaking of. Now, the Pharisee was in the center of the temple, ignoring the temple lambs being sacrificed. The publican was being degraded and humiliated as the Pharisee was exalted himself. And Jesus said of the publican, he said, that man went down to his house as one who having been justified, declared right, is always being declared right. Now, Jesus said that for Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He is the basis of conciliation for the Father in relationship to the atonement for sins. His blood's also that which is in relationship to the kins, as in kinsman redeemer. And he is the one through whom and by whom and apart from whom the Father had nothing to do with reconciling the world, but it was all in Christ Jesus, the Father reconciled the world unto himself. So now we are moving on here. So the faithfulness of Christ is the righteousness of God. It, Paul talked about it in Romans where it says they rejected the righteousness, that state of justice that only Jesus could have achieved by fulfilling, literally cramming full, filling up the law. Uh, it's, it'd be quite a step down to just say he simply kept it. He fulfilled, filled it up, literally. And Paul said they rejected that state of righteousness established in Christ, defined by his faithfulness, seeking to establish their own righteousness. So here it's very clear now that uh, as ones who having noticed and are continuing to notice that no kind of man is being justified out from any kind of works of any kind of law, uh, except through, so a man is justified through a kind of faithfulness uh, that's exclusive, the only kind that could have been done, which is by Jesus, the elect one, Isaiah 42. Indeed, he says, we ourselves, we ourselves believed, believe this is that simple form of action. You know your endings now when you go through your salmon, sate, you all know these things. Se, you got that. So there's your first person plural and you've got this, that's your aorist. There's your uh, prefix with your ending in order that. So he says a specific purpose. We believed, notice this, into Christ Jesus. We enter Christ Jesus by faith, by faith. And he says in order that specific purpose that we might be justified out from, here's that faithfulness again. It's a particular kind of faithfulness. It's a quality of kind. We know it's a kind that no man except the chosen one, Isaiah 42, Jesus to Christ exclusively, and only man ever born able and willing even wanted to do it. He was willing to do it. He was willing to set his will aside and do his father's will and only Jesus. He's the only one in whom the fullness of the God had dwelt bodily. So it says here, faithfulness of Christ Jesus and not out from any kind of works of any kind of law. 
because out from any kind of works of any kind of law, notice this, all flesh, all flesh, that's kind of, all of them, all, all the kinds of flesh, let's say, all kinds of flesh, all flesh, so no human being, I saw that in one reference where a person was making a comment about this text and said, no human being. Well, it would really have been better to say no kind of human being. But here, all, universal term, quality again, all flesh. So that would be Old Testament, New Testament, future tribulation, past great tribulation, a preterist human, a futurist human, a historic human, a, anyway, a pre-trib human, whatever, however people wanted to characterize themselves in ethnicity, politics, religion, and cultural identity, even boomers, uh, Gen Xers, millennials, whatever that is, he says that all flesh will not be future passive here, will not be, all flesh will not be justified because out from any kind of works of any kind of law, all flesh will not be justified. So really, it's not a debate. I wouldn't and again, as I've uh, helped you all with it, you, you'll find it more and more unlikely to engage someone because they really won't have anything to say. And, and then you really won't have anything to offer except information that they lack. And then you might notice that they don't really want that information. As one great teacher once said, that you'll find people only interested insofar as it serves their interest. But if what you're teaching or saying doesn't serve their interest, uh, you might find source avoidance. That's called source bias. Uh, we know a lot of times that interferes with us, and we all have to approach the text uh, knowing that we already have something between our ears with which we have become, uh, according to which we were primed, and maybe even have uh, become so acquainted with it that we think it charming or actually the truth. So we may not be prepared for the knowledge gap uh, between what the text says and what's between our ears, what we've been told or heard. And thankfully, a lot of us were taught good things early. Uh, those of us who were in New Testament churches here when they were very prevalent here in the local community. And now there's just a few of them remaining, but they still prevail. And no one is fathered through any other kind of gospel except the kind that speaks only of Jesus. And unless you trust Jesus for everlasting life, there's certainly no other options. And Everything in the Bible is about him. Even the first word in the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, as those of you who study the language notice that, that first word speaks of Jesus and his crucifixion. And by the time Moses wrote that, that's long after Adam had sinned. So Moses, in the very first word of the first chapter of the first book, in the book of Moses, as Jesus told them, who said they believed in Moses, he said, if you believed Moses, but you didn't, that conditional uh, sentence there, he said, but you didn't, then you would believe in me, but you won't. So that's enough. I think we've answered the question. I'll include this article. But the controversy about a gospel, does a gospel exist that's different? And the difference being the relation to the dispensation. Uh, that's several steps removed from any hermeneutic of which I'm aware. And it certainly uh, finds no place here. So this text completely eradicates the possibility. And that's primarily because of the absence of articles, the definite articles. So enjoy this good language lesson. It's a low degree of difficulty. It's not really abstract. It's not the high intellectualism, as I like to tell the church, the mental spiritual connection that we enjoy is we're intelligent enough to know something and be certain of it and spiritual enough to have hope. And we're confronted always with these people that have a mental, spiritual disconnect. They're so intelligent, they are uncertain of everything. And they're so spiritual, they have hope for nothing. So uh, pray for them. Be patient, as we have always been reminded. And as those who went before us taught, uh, for those who oppose themselves, remember the conflict's between their ears long before it's between us, so that when they begin to make it between us and them, it's the indication for us to know we need to be the patient ones. We need to take the time, learn this, word it out for people and be very uh, deliberate and careful and keep on teaching. So you have a blessed day and enjoy this lesson.